I think is designed, if you will, to open the heart, to inspire, to uplift. And one of the things that I remember Swami saying is there is a great difference between community and guest experience. And for him, this was a, um, a hard line, if you will, that for the guests, because I work so much at the retreat, the Expanding Light, um, for the guests, it was important to Swamiji that we only share Master's chants and Swamiji's chants and Swami's music um, in general because the vibration and the energy of that music is a part of Yogananda's message and Swamiji's mission in this um, you know, uh, work that is Ananda when I think worldwide. That music is an intrinsic, essential part of the message. When I first came to Ananda, I remember the music being a very, very important thing for me. Um, it touched my heart immediately. I remember learning chants um, and picking the ones that touch me the most. And I remember mentioning once to Swamiji that there were some chants that I didn't particularly like. And all I meant by that was they didn't touch me. And somehow that felt wrong. I don't know why. And I mentioned it to Swamiji and he said, if that happens with a chant, take it and chant it only that one for a month, two months, and see what happens. And the one I'm thinking of now in particular um, I did that with, and it totally changed it. It, it. I love it now. It's one of my favorites. So um, when it comes to music in general, there is something different happening uh, when it comes to Ananda music and our chanting and kirtans, because it's about inspiration. It's about devotion. It's not just about enjoying music something else is going on and it has to do with consciousness, energy, vibration, all of those very, very subtle words. When I first came, um, there were a lot more Indian chants and I remember when Swamiji uh, changed that and a lot of us didn't understand why he decided to do that. But of course, you come to understand, just like I did with that chant um, that I just told you about that I had problems with and then I loved. There is um, something he's teaching, but he, he said to us, many, many people have mentioned to me that the Indian chants get in their way. Um, obviously not just community people, but guests, visitors, etc. And it made him think. He wanted to be more open to that. We're in the West. There are still lots of Indian chants that we do. So changes happen, but always for good reason. If there is a line, for instance, between community and guest experience, there's a reason. There's an absolutely wonderful, good, purposeful reason that that happens. And I think also a thing to remember for ourselves is that sometimes we have less energy, sometimes more. Sometimes we feel more heartful, inward, soulful, sometimes more outward, more energetic in an outward sense. These states of being are touched, moved, uplifted, depressed by music. Um, I remember once having a very difficult time in my life and I mentioned 
a chant to Swami that I wanted to chant because of the words, but the melody, it was somebody else's melody, was very uh, dirge-like, kind of depressing, and I needed uplifting. And he rewrote the music. He did it for my birthday. And now it's one of our popular chants, our favorite chants. But the point is that music affects it. It really um, affects our awareness, our consciousness. And when we are practicing singing, chanting, it's a very, very um, important part of it to be aware of what is happening within us. If anyone ever feels, for instance, why, why can't we chant these uh, other chants? Why can't we, why do we only do these kinds of chants at Ananda? The reason is because of the things I'm saying now, and it comes directly from Swamiji, that sometimes rajas is good, but not continuously, not all the time. We have to take it within. Even in one kirtan, Swamiji would say that when you begin, um, begin with more outward energetic chants, always stop and go inward after a chant. Keep taking the chants more deeply within, more and more, more and more as the kirtan continues, so that the end result is a shift in our consciousness, that we are inspired to then offer to God our experience or go into meditation longer. Um, with the music, Swamiji um, wrote music incredibly, again, purposefully, deliberately, designed as were Master's cosmic chants, designed to bring us to an experience of God. And I would say it's a wonderful practice to just listen to one song, one tape, um, meaning, you know, a, a particular CD, for instance, of Ananda music, and just listen to it for longer periods, like a month, two months, just to let it get into your consciousness. If you feel resistance, like I told you I did with a particular chant when I first came to Ananda, uh, practice with that, work with that. Don't reject that if you can. Um, because it's important for us to have our hearts open when it comes to um, music especially. Because Ananda music, as I said, is designed for you. It's for each one of us to be changed in our consciousness. And why would we not want that? You know, there, there's no reason we wouldn't want that. I have sung in the choir up until about two years ago because my voice couldn't take it anymore. Um, very hard decision to make to stop singing. But um, I did uh, quite a few solos, uh, duets I should say, not solos, duets with Swamiji. So I worked with him a lot. And one of the things to think about um, when singing, Swamiji would say, be in your heart, um, do it for the joy of it. This is a beautiful part of, of uh, singing and sharing the music. Um, the, he, 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 Swamiji would not, um, he often didn't like a lot of technical training with the voice and music. Now, I don't mean by that practice, but not, you know, I think in terms of operatic voices or where there is a, a, a contrived way of working with the voice. He was much more into natural singing from the heart, but of course, placing the voice well so that you didn't wear out your voice. But anyway, the point um, in working with him um, in the choir, in, in singing duets with him, um, that I wanted to make was how lovely and natural he was. Um, I remember um, once in the very early years of my being here at Ananda, um, people in the choir were talking, and because Swami used to drop in on rehearsals in those days, often. 
and people would say, oh, it makes me nervous when Swami comes. And I would laugh and say, oh, I always feel more comfortable. And it was because in working with him to record duets and so on, he was always so easy. If we did something wrong, well, let's do it over. We can do it again. No big deal. Very, very easy. Not, not um, unnatural, not, we have to get this right, let's go. Very, very fluid and easy. And because of that, when you sing and share from the heart, it isn't nervous, it isn't you, you just do it. I have to tell this story because it's in my mind. I went to New York to set up, this was long ago, in, in probably in the early 80s, to set up um, a program for Swamiji who was coming to New York. And he came and we were meeting all these people that were going to be in a, in a weekend program with him. And it was like a meet and greet party. And so people are, who were going to be coming to the seminar um, were there, maybe 50 people. And in the corner of the room that we were in, there was a piano and Swamiji said to the hostess, um, may I play you a piece of my music? I wrote a sonata and I'd like to share it with you. And she said, we'd be delighted. So he asked me to turn the pages of the music. Now this was all very impromptu and I hadn't been, I'd only been at Ananda maybe four years and five years, six years at the most, I think four. And he, he said, I'd like you to turn the pages of the music. Well, I didn't read music. And I said, I don't read music, Swamiji. And he said, no problem, I'll nod to you. So I was staring at him so I didn't miss one movement of his head. Now, his sonata has two um, choral uh, pieces, the, be the beginning and the end uh, uh, sections. What do you, movements? So we get to the last movement and he turned to me and said, you can sing this one. And I was like, galvanized. He, I'd never sung a solo at that point. But he, this, why I'm sharing this with you is the naturalness, the ease with which he'd done the whole thing, even though I was nervous, I just stood up and did it. I don't remember what it sounded like. I have no clue. I just got up and did it. If he's going to be this easy, so am I. Um, with everything, with everything, Swamiji is like that. So you know that if he is saying to us, do it this way, it's with an open heart, it's with grace, it's with this will help you. This is for you. There's no blocking. There's no stopping energy. It's about flow of energy. And it's also about the level of energy and the inspiration. So when we don't get it, try to, which is what I was doing, try to, try to be in tune with what he, Sw he Swamiji, or Ananda, because Ananda is the result of Swamiji's vision and care, um, is trying to do. It's for us. It's to help us. It's to uplift us. It's to guide us. No other purpose. Nothing else going on. Um, the way that he did it, ease, grace, love, is the way that the songs make us feel. So you're putting that out and you're sharing it with others. That's, that's all that's really going on. Try to attune to that reality. I struggled with it in the early years. Many of us did, I know. So people will and continue to. It's okay. Just keep working with it and enjoy it. Bottom line, enjoy it.